Kadeshor Chatz, Karpas Yachatz, Magid Rachsa, Motzi Matza, Marakorech, Shulchan Orech, Tzafum Barech, Halel Nirza, Pesach, we celebrate with matzah, maror, and the seder plate. Manish tana, four cups of wine. We eat the afikomen and we all recline. Kadesh or chatz, karpas yachatz, magid rachsa, mozi matzah, maror korech, shulchan orech, tzafum barech, halel nirza, Pesach, we celebrate with matzah, maror, and the seder plate. Manish tana, four cups of wine. We eat the afikomen, and the prize is mine. All right, time to review the Pesach story, learn a little bit more about the Pesach story, and learn the next step of our seder. So let's begin with the king of Mitzrayim. The king of Mitzrayim's name was Paro, and he was a mean king. He did not like the Jewish people, and he had some rules about them. The first rule was that all of the Jewish baby boys that were born had to be thrown in the river. The second rule was that the Jewish people were his avadim. They did all of the work for Paro and the Mitzrim. They were their slaves. Now one day, Yocheved had a baby. She didn't want to throw him in the river, so she put him in a basket and sent him down the river like that. Sing along with me. Baby Moshe, baby Moshe, floating down the river. Baby Moshe, baby Moshe, Please don't cry or shiver. You're the one Hashem did choose. You're the one to save the Jews. Baby Moshe, baby Moshe, floating down the river. Great job. And now, who found baby Moshe when he was floating down the river? Who was it? Think for a second. It was Paro's daughter Batya, and she pulled baby Moshe out. She named him Moshe, and she raised him as her son. And then when Moshe grew up and got bigger, he did not like seeing the Jewish people as Avadim, so he ran away from Mitzrayim. And do you remember what strange thing he saw? He saw a burning bush, and he heard a voice calling to him, Moshe, Moshe, it's Hashem. And Hashem gave Moshe a very special job. That special job was that he was going to be the leader of the Jewish people to take them out of Mitzrayim. Moshe, you need to go to Paro and say, let my people go. Moshe didn't really want to do that. He was kind of nervous. What if, what if Paro says no? What if he gets angry at me? Don't worry, Moshe. Go to Paro. Moshe went to Paro, and he said, Oh, listen, oh, listen, oh, listen, King Paro. Oh, listen, oh, listen, please let my people go. They work so hard all day. They want to go away. King Paro, King Paro, what do you say? Paro thought about it. Hmm. Should I let my Jewish Avadim go? And what do you think Paro said? Yes or no? Yeah. He said no. He said, no, 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 I will not let them go. No, 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 I will not let them go. Please, please let them go. And Paro said, I will not let them go. So Moshe told Paro something. He said, if you don't let the Jewish people go, your avadim go, Hashem is going to send you ten makot. Eser makot. Eser is how you say ten in Hebrew. Let's count in Hebrew. Echad, 
שתיים, שלוש, ארבע, חמש, שש, שבע, שמונה, תשע, עשר. עשר is ten. Ten mako, mako, ten. The midstream were punished again and again. Ten mako, mako, ten. The midstream were punished again and again. What were those ten mako? Let's see. Dam spar de akinim arov dever shrin. Barad arbecho shech makapechoro. These are the eser mako. I'm going to do that song one more time because it's a lot of Hebrew words. Dam tzvar deya kinim arov dever shchin. Barad arbecho shech makapechoro. These are the eser mako. I want you to think about all of those words I just said. Dam. Svardeya, Kinim, Arov, Dever, Shrin, Barad, Arbe, Choshech, and Makapechoro. And I want you to try your best to remember any of the makot that we learned when this was in the Parsha. Even if you just remember one, that's okay. But try to remember as many as you can. And tomorrow I'll go through all ten. And I have some puppets for all ten to show you also, okay? Now let's look at the Haggadah. And we can look over here. The first thing was Kaddish, we make Kiddush. Kaddish, or Chatz, we wash our hands, but we do not make a bracha. But no bracha, I can still talk because I'm not going to eat bread right now or matzah. Kadesh or chatz, karpas. Karpas, we are up to karpas. Karpas, we dip a vegetable in salt water. I have another one over here. Got my bowl of salt water, got my vegetable, dip it in. Kadesh. We make kiddush, or chatz, we wash our hands, karpas, we dip a vegetable in salt water. That's kind of strange to dip vegetables in salt water, don't you think? Well, salt water is made of two ingredients. I think you can figure it out. What do you think those two ingredients are? I hope you said salt and water. Now, there's something else that's watery that is salty. I'll tell you, it's our tears. When you cry and tears come down, if you ever taste those tears, you will taste that those are pretty salty. So let's think the story of Pesach. Who might have cried? Who wasn't so happy during the story of Pesach? You know who I think wasn't so happy? I think the Avadim weren't so happy. I think the Jewish people probably cried a lot when they were Avadim and they had those salty tears. So when we do karpas and we dip our vegetable in salt water and we eat it and we taste that salt, we're remembering the Avadim that had salty tears and that cried when they were slaves. So when you take your vegetable, dip it in the salt water, you make that face, ooh, salty. And you think of those Avadim that cried and had salty tears. Now, if you look at my Karpas page, I've got a few different vegetables here. I've got parsley, which is this green leafy vegetable. I've got radish, which is this reddish vegetable. And a potato right here. Different families dip different vegetables in their salt water for Karpas. Some families might dip parsley as their Karpas. Some families might dip celery. Some might dip potatoes. Some might dip radishes. And there might be others too, I don't know. I will tell you that my parents dip parsley for karpas and Jonathan's parents dip celery. Two different things. I bet if you asked your parents what you dip at your Seder for karpas, we might get some different answers too. I would love it if you can all ask your families what you use for karpas 
and we can find out how many different vegetables M4A uses. So ask them, what do we use for carpas? What do we dip in the salt water when we remember the tears of the Avadim? Let's review that Haggadah one more time before we go, because you guys are going to get really good at this. Kadesh, we make Kiddush. Orchat, we wash our hands, but we do not say a bracha. Karpas, we dip a vegetable in salt water, and we remember the tears of the Avadim in Mitzrayim. You guys are so good at learning the Pesach story and the Haggadah, and we're going to learn even more tomorrow. So don't forget to think about those makot, and if you remember what any of the makot are, and also to ask your family what you use for karpas. See you later. Bye.